He's f***ing unbelievable. So this is the one that I get asked a lot of questions about is hand conditioning. Now, I'll tell you an interesting story, actually. Uh, well, it might be interesting to some of you. I actually met Bert Biev in Chicago when he was fighting on the same card as one of the fighters that I was working with. I was running on fight day. I normally do a workout on fight day, just to take my mind off things. And I was running on the treadmill and I just see this big guy next to me. Look to the right. It was Bert Biev running backwards on the treadmill on fight day. And then he gets off and starts doing all these routines and everything. He was one scary guy. The size of him as well. Like I think like I'm probably 10 kilos above him. He was massive. For such a big guy to be able to do this, like balancing on his fingertips and on the inside of his wrist, sorry, on the outside of his wrist and wrist flexion, really, really strong. I wouldn't advise everybody to go and try this, but BF has been doing this for years and has become really efficient at doing it and build that strength over time. If somebody goes and tries this for the first time and hasn't got that wrist strength, they might end up getting injured. It's the amount of time that you've got to invest into this to get as good as Bert BF and as efficient as this, that time could be invested elsewhere, whether that's into your mobility, whether that's into your strength training, your core conditioning, which is more likely to have a bigger transferred effect into your boxing. This move here, when it goes onto the inside, a lot of wrist flexion. This is what boxers are more prone to doing when they're punching any, anyway and really need to work on wrist extension to be able to maintain that wrist kind of alignment with the fist and that will help protect the hand and also all the upper limb there. So if you're going to work on anything, you want to be working on extension. Here are a few different ways that you can uh, do regressions. You can do the fingertip one just on the wall going backwards and forwards and that's uh, something that I picked up from Ian Gout on the Boxing Science Conference. Instead of working on wrist flexion, working on wrist extension. So doing some dumbbell reverse curls, dumbbell reverse wrist curls to work on that wrist extension rather than working on flexion. He's f***ing unbelievable. What's more impressive here is that it's actually, it's all this body weight that goes into it. Look, you now he's lifting up his feet at the same time and all his body weight's going through that. So. Like I said, it's years and years of practice, something that I wouldn't advise everybody to do. Another famous one, something that we've actually covered on the Boxing Science uh, YouTube channel before, bar rotations. To do this with 20 kilos, he is so, so strong, so strong. Doing it going from a pronator to supinator position, putting a lot of kind of stress through this elbow joint here, on the inside of the elbow. Boxers will probably tend to try and flare up the elbow to control that and won't have that strength and stability there. You could do it with a, a mop or a broomstick or, and then go on to like a lighter bar rather than trying to do this with a 20 kilo bar. You're just likely to get injured. Like I said, with the press up ones, Bert BF has probably been doing this for years. What is good is the turnovers and you could do this in an isolated way to work on the forearm strength. And doing this with a bias loading to a dumbbell, getting onto a table, doing some wrist rockers, going from side to side, going from pronated to supinated position. This is probably going to be better for you and won't take that much time to be able to kind of load that up. I think the opening and closing is a good way, a good exercise to do. Maybe doing this with a broomstick or with a, a mop or light bar as a supplementary exercise. But if you're really wanting to get the forearm strong, Let's start doing these kind of bias dumbbell turnovers. That's going to be more effective, increasing wrists and hand strength. Look at this. You know what? This exercise is something that I probably wouldn't put into any programs, but the technique of this is fantastic. Like you can see there, that is getting into that pike off the floor, tucking up the toes and then dropping in and his hips stay in neutral position and then they're getting enough power to drive up his hips there and get off the floor. Impressive, really impressive. To transfer this into, into your programs, a TRX Pike, doing a Swiss ball Pike, and this will help improve like kind of your core strength, but also it's great for serratus anterior strength and also uh, working that shoulder mobility and stability as well. It's a cool exercise, but well, something that's probably unachievable. A few different ways that you can actually use this into your program to get stronger through your core and through your posterior shoulder.
What can I say about that? Okay, so we've got some uh, Olympic lifting here, which is great to see because like, it is the gold standard for improving strength, speed and explosiveness. Don't see many boxers actually doing Olympic lifting. Now, boxing science, we're big fans of Olympic lifting, how it improves strength, speed, explosiveness, like kinetic chain sequencing, creating the isometric strength, like in the snap, in the catching action. The reasons why we don't use full variations is probably what Berta BF is showing here. They don't have that kind of mobility and technique to make it effective in terms of loading to improve strength and speed to make it a safe exercise as well and reducing the likelihood of injury. But Biev is struggling to get that front racked position, putting a lot of loading through the wrists and through the elbows and that's probably why he's using some straps there to reduce the amount of loading going through the wrists. And also the catch position there is onto his toes, very knee dominant, knees are coming in as well. He's probably using his back a lot on here and that's probably why he's using the Olympic lifting belt there to reduce the loading through the back which if he just improved his technique will reduce that loading better and make it a safer exercise. At Boxing Science, instead of using power cleans and full variation of the cleans, go to regressions such as like the clean pull, clean pull from blocks and using like kind of landmine variations, whether that's a landmine snatch, landmine split jerk, single arm split jerk and also doing a dumbbell split jerk as well. Using the, what the benefits are Olympic lifting but using regressions to make it safer and more effective as well. So alternate dumbbell chest press. Yeah, it's a good exercise this. You've got to work on core, obviously single arm strength is important, but also the core's got to be really strong to push on one side whilst holding the weight on the other. What I would say is probably getting that full extension and not using it as a repetitive movement. So it's not really working that eccentric there. What I would say is to hold the weight there, press out, pull it down, all the way down, and then repeat the next action. Also, you could do it from uh, with reduced load, start position, probably do this in a general preparation phase where you're looking to increase the amount of volume whilst increasing the intensity very, very slowly. So something that you can reduce the weight load on. So starting from full extended position, keeping one arm out, dropping it, and then back up. So you can get that volume in without increasing the intensity too much, which will make the athletes sore around the tendon joints, uh, tendons and the joints. Yeah, so similar exercise, seated position, forward, without the back support, doing alternate shoulder press, something that we've been using quite a lot. Great little tip that you can do is actually bring the feet in, have a foam roller in between the legs, and what this does is eliminate any kind of rotational action, side bending, or kind of flaring of the rib cage, rocking a little bit from side to side, and also compensating through the lower back. Knees are quite wide there. It would get a lot more out of the action, a lot more out of the shoulders, if you just had them feet a little bit close together, squeezing the foam roller, core tense, and then also waiting for that dumbbell to come all the way back in, pull it down, and then back up. Keep the core nice and tense, obliques have really got to work, and also no compensatory patterns, so it increases the activation of the shoulder. So great exercise to use. Great footwork drills here. Very specific, boxing specific, it's in his stance and then doing a little ollie shuffle there. And you can hear the stamping, is on a hard surface there. And this is what I talk to our boxers a lot about. As soon as they get on the ladders, they seem to like go really light on the feet. I want them to really put force through the floor to really work on like, reactive strength. You can hear the taps of Berta Biev there on the floor. It's getting some really good reactive element from the floor. Yeah, I like this one. I might start making that and putting that with the boxes. So this exercise here is really working on Berta BF's ability to rotate through the trunk through punching action. When you do like med ball throws, you want it predominantly coming from the lower body, hip rotation and trunk rotation at the same time. But if we've got a boxer that's predominantly strong in the, in the lower body, not really overload that trunk rotation in terms of the punching action. It's increasing that core activation and that cueing through being in the, that sit up position and then is rotating all the way through the movement. It's getting that uh, stretch shortening cycle working of the core by sitting back and then driving through the action full rotation whilst locking that lower body in. Fantastic exercise to improve the trunk rotation during a punching action. Ah. Ah. So 
So we've got Anderson squats here, bouncing off the pins. Now Anderson squats, I think that a great exercise to use, something that we use quite often at Boxing Science. Working through partial range movements to overload that squat in action will help increase force development, which then in turn increase rate of force development. Now we go from a dead start instead of bouncing from the pins, so we're working on starting strength. Here, when it's bouncing off the pins, can end up being quite, quite dangerous through that bottom part and not really getting a good setup. So when you're really overloading that squat in action, you want to make sure that you take that deep breath in, locking the elbows down, locking the ribcage down, getting them lats fired up and really pushing through the floor. If you're overloading that action through an Anderson squat and just bouncing, you can see there that is every squat is, is getting a little bit slower, maybe a little bit more back dominant. But yeah, Anderson squats, fantastic exercise to use to help increase force development. Just make sure that you're starting from a dead start every time, creating that tension, increasing that speed every single rep. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the video, this review of the unique strength and conditioning methods of Artur Bertabiev. I've actually enjoyed doing that, taking some good stuff away. Hopefully you have too. And looking at some of the regressions and variations that you can use to get strong and as punch as hard as Artur Bertabiev. No promises here, by the way. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If not uh, subscribe yet, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content. If you've got any questions or want us to do this kind of reaction video on a box of or a combat sport athlete of your choice, please leave some suggestions in the comment box below. And I'll hopefully see you on the next video of Boxing Science Reacts.